Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Searching for Political Identity. It is I, your host, Brian Escal. Great to be with you. Thank you so much for being here. My guest today is a friend from Twitter, or X, excuse me, Elon. Cody has been on the show once before, and we talked about the quantum financial system, which is supposed to, the last time we did, which was supposed to be getting away from fiat into some gold, crypto, AI-managed hybrid financial system and aliens and kind of just trippy alternative things last time. And this time, we also talked a lot about alien theories, but, and, and so we did spend just some, you know, 20, 30 minutes on that. Um, it, but my point is, Cody is a very interesting guy. He's got an MBA. He's got a PhD. He did a dissertation on restorative justice. He's an amazing poet. Um, and he's just a friend from X. And he's got interesting things to say. And we talked about, I mean, so if you're looking for a boring, surface level mainstream political conversation this episode is not for you skip it but if you're if you're willing to hear an alternative take on weather and war and economics and spirituality and history and politics and culture and justice as i said he's study he wrote a paper on rest, a dissertation on restorative justice um diet you know what are the problems with bread someone od'd on carrots i mean uh, but also fascinatingly, his prediction. OK, so. The bulk of the conversation actually was centered around these documents that he stumbled across in 1998 and which he thinks were from the future. And he's just got an interesting take on things and you want to write it off. But since I got on X a few years ago, you start going is are there aliens you know are the, all a lot of these conspiracies end up coming true how deep does the rabbit hole go and so as m much as you might want to dismiss i got to tell you that if i'm being honest it wouldn't be fair for me to dismiss them because i've shown interest in these very same subjects so it was a fun chat because it's fun to let your mind go and wander and be creative. And this is actually a really relevant point. If you do make it to the full end of the episode, you'll realize we actually did bring it full circle. And being creative is really, really important to creating a sense of justice and creating the better world and being positive. So this is a trippy chat, an interesting chat. And one other thing I want to mention is he gives at the towards the end of the conversation some predictions about what might happen. Actually, he references it right in the beginning of our chat too. But at the very end, he gets a little more specific of what he expects to happen in the next several months. And I got to tell you guys, according to Cody, you ain't seen nothing yet if you think we've already been through weird times uh, with these assassination attempts and these hot swap. You know, it's just it's apparently according to Cody going to get very weird and there's a simpson there's even a simpsons episode that he refers to so brace yourselves you're going deep here and it's about to get strange and so thank you very much for being here and like i like to say at the end of all my intros i got to start becoming more interesting and less a little but uh i'll see you next week so thanks guys all right, man welcome back thank you so much for being here you're welcome man i enjoy it Enjoy coming, coming on and talking and everything. You've just been uh, on the first time. I I know you, you want to start by asking me a question to kick off the conversation, so we will do that. But uh, you've just been on once before, and uh, so welcome back. I oh, you know, we've had a Twitter friendship for yeah. just like my previous guests for as long as I've been on, and uh, appreciate your kindness and interactions and contributions to my page. So thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. So. What, what do you want to ask me? Okay, so the, the question that I would like to ask you is, uh, how does 2 plus 2 equal 100? Right. So I won't, I won't be disingenuous with the audience. You did ask me if I knew that question, if I had ever been asked that, and I said, no, I don't really know the answer, and I've never, been, I've never seen you ask that question. So, but I knew it was coming. So could I explain how 2 plus 2 equals 100? That's the question? Yes. 
Um, no. Okay. Um, w what it has to do with is it has to do with um, it's 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 a trick on the mind, but it's a different number system. Like we're used to the decimal system, which is one you know counting by ten, but you also include another number system in your everyday life called sexagesimal, which sexagesimal is counting by time. You know, every it goes up to 60 and then it starts back over. That's how the Sumerians did it. Actually, geometry is, is based on sexagesimal, mostly. Um, and um, so if you look at the binary system, in the binary system, the number one zero equals two. So one zero plus one zero equals one zero zero. So therefore two plus two equals a hundred. And this has to do, and I'm bringing this topic up because it has to do with qualia. Like when I first learned about this, I was uh, going to school at Texas State and I used it in a paper trying to explain um, how both science and Genesis in the Bible were talking about the same things when it came to like whether it's evolution or it's creation we're talking about the same things but they were just using a different language and therefore they couldn't understand each other wow. and so like one like let's say you know creationists were talking about like two plus two equals a hundred and then the um, evolutionists and science were two plus two equals four but they can't understand each other and that's what qualia is qualia is how your mind how you interpret the world through your mind for example color is not real it's created in your mind so we may not see color the same like your blue may not be the same way i see blue and we know this is true because of people who have color blindness um and other things like some people think some colors are better than others and things like that you'd think if we all saw the same color that we would all come to the same conclusions about what color looks best what colors complement each other but that's not the case and and overall this also comes down to something called um in scientific research it's called symbolic interactionism meaning that we give meaning to words, but it may not be the exact same definition as you perceive. And this causes miscommunication problems. It's like we're all our own universe. Mm -hmm. right. And we're and the best way to try and communicate with each other is to try and understand each other. And so in, in a way, we, because we'll probably, you know, talk about some of the heated topics or something like that. I always try to remember we're, we're kind of all in a way I, I i think that a majority of us are trying to find the same goal but because of different experiences different ways on how we view definitions and things of that nature we come into complications and we stop trying to and we stop trying to understand each other and we just focus on our what our agenda basically is. so the qualia is the ultimate manifestation of it is the uh, algorithm echo chamber in social media. That that can be very yeah. In well, a poetic way, you might say yeah. that yeah. the qualia is what you're what you're saying to me is we all have internal preferences and so much of life is subjective. It's a social and, construct, really. What do you mean? Like the world that we perceive like when i was talking about the two plus two equals a hundred like the first thing that your mind went to was the decimal system right you know, that can't be true so you, the first thing that you were looking at was what you were taught you always go back mm. to what you were taught and you don't really know yourself until you kind of like admit like hey maybe everything is a lie but you really don't know everything Right. But until you start investigating it, but you've got to Matrix. kind of the yeah, go ahead. in a way, yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, go. Um, well, yeah, so your point is that so much of life is a social construct, 
meaning that it's our it's an experience that is taught and so reality is elusive yes. and so many people stop trying to even find it yes and we should probably focus more on our inner world before trying to fix the outer world because right. that's another thing we get caught up in this whole material holographic illusion and, and that's really what this place is is it's a holographic illusion and our body is tuned to only perceive certain frequencies um mostly on the uh on the light frequencies but we can't we can't see everything else and it's and now it's, now what you're referring to is the the metaphysical conversation about how this world is uh, built on something. It's not the base reality. When you say illusion, a simulation, when you hear this online, yes. you're talking about people are talking. So do you want to go a, into that? Not a computer simulation. It's like um, this world, like if you were to strip this reality away, we would be like, it'd be some kind of like ball of energy is what it would be. And think of it as we're like, in a television screen like this energy is producing that light and and this this holographic reality that we live in is and and that's really what it is it's it's a hologram not and and i'm not trying to say that that doesn't mean that nothing really matters or nothing really exists you know this place exists for a reason and a purpose yeah people say what you hear online is this is the three dimensional, but the reality, the base reality is much higher. This is a condensed version of our light bodies and our spirits. And so, is this hell? Is why are we condensed into these solid forms? But that's basically the thought, right? Yes, yes. And I, I don't know if I have an answer to the other question, but I, I, there was at one time where I thought that was that maybe this was hell, but I've come more to the thinking as that this world goes by how we think and that's why i choose to think positive is to create a better world than to think negative and continue to create right hell. so th so the idea being that this is earth and you can go either way and you should strive to to go positively yeah, yeah. but you're spiritual you're a spiritual man are you very very spiritual yeah, yeah. and yeah and, and um that can um so where do you want to where do you want to shoot from this topic? Well, let's just go into tell me about these 1998 documents. This experience you okay. had with documents in '98. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to first mention on this is is okay. Yeah, I, I would have to say I was four years off when I was talking to you the last time, uh, and because we can start to see that now because. I talked about a uniting message that would come and Trump started doing that. RFK picked up on it. Right. And later, not this election, I don't think. It depends on how things play out. And this was the area where I had the most difficulty because it was so confusing uh, when I was reading it. Um, but here soon, we're going to have a young president. And right now, I'm thinking that that person's going to be the vape elected in 2028. Um, and I think he's going to be who we call the great uniter. I could be wrong on that. It could be Vance. But I see it more from the vape than I do from Vance. But I could be wrong. It's not like I, was, I wasn't given names or necessarily time periods. I was given just like presidents, really, to base my understanding on it. Uh, but one of the things, I, I don't know if I hit on this ever, but I've thought about those documents a lot. And uh, so I wanted to state, like, the person who gave me those documents, interestingly, his name was Brian. Um, of course. <laughs> I knew a lot of Brian's. It was me, then. you don't remember? Yeah. <laughs> um, I knew a lot of Brian's back then, though. Um, but it was a popular name back in the 90s. Um, yeah. but, um, so the person who gave it to me when I was reading the documents, 
the person who wrote the documents was not the individual. The person who wrote the documents was um, just delivering them to me, but he knew me and he knew certain actions I would do in the future, specifically my laugh and my <laughs> that little like. How do you smile. know that he knew that you would develop that little symbol, little? Because he told me, he goes, one of the things I liked about your videos was your honk honk. And I was like, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> and because I, I didn't know how to do that until seven years after I met him. The laugh, the laugh I could do. Like, I had the crazy laugh because, you know, I guess that was, you know, we all wanted a crazy laugh back then and I developed one. So just when we were goofing around and stuff like that, you know, being teenagers. Sure. But, uh, um, um, but anyway, um, but um, so like the person, they, they talked about streaming in there, like, um, like, so, so, so you meet a guy, you, you know, a guy named Brian, or you stumble upon a guy named Brian and he has some documents. He was, he was my manager at Tom Thumb, one of my managers, like a front end manager. And the, the, the reason it came up was, and in some ways, I, I don't know. Well, hold on. Let me finish this part. But I started, we had an English assignment in our class. And it was about what we thought the future would be. And we were just, I was talking to people about this at my work and stuff like that. I was a, a grocery sacker at Tom Thumb. And he goes, I got something for you to check out. And so I went on my break and he gave me these papers. And he said, I'm going to hand these to you, read them tonight, and bring them back to me tomorrow. And I was like, okay. And when I left, I read them that night. And I thought it was the weirdest thing, really. And when I was reading them, I was like, I was like, what, what happened? How did, how did America go from, like, us in 1998, where we're, like, strong and everything like that, to, like, it seemed like satanic hell in a way because it, it it talked about all this weird stuff coming viruses i mean it, it truly felt like i mean even in there it said it said don't take the vaccine and and that's actually when that happened that was actually when i decided not to take any more vaccines even though i knew that was in a future days and i haven't had a vaccine since 1998 and um but uh it, it talked about all that stuff leading up to that and it talked about world war three a financial collapse should be coming soon um uh, and like really world war three started with 9 11. Uh, we might see that later on in history but that's how he described it was everything started with 9 11 hmm. and and i i i didn't even believe in this thing until 9 11 happened when 9 11 happened i was on like a um a website called open diary at the time and i said all this is going to lead to world war three and and it's going to be uh brutally drawn out and he talked about obama as a foreign president and he talked about him as muslim and not as Christian and because he said in there he goes he goes it's confusing that while we're in a war with radical Islam that we would choose an Islamic president mm -hmm. so he saw who whoever wrote these saw through things that most people couldn't see um and one of the things I was waiting for that was like the big bomb was you know Obama really didn't kill Bin Laden. And when that kind of came out, I think it was in like 2018 to 2020. And I know a lot of people haven't seen it. But I was like, okay, things things are coming up and coming through. We're, we're getting ready for an explosion of truth about to happen. And that's, um, that's when I started prepping seriously because I knew that we were going to come to this 
high inflation time and, and everything like that. I'm not for sure about like, I think the power outages are mostly just like regional due to um, certain events that are supposed to happen. Like we're supposed to be bombarded with like some very bad storms are coming our way. And you can kind of see that in the weather lately. Like there's a, there's another hurricane coming, like almost the whole state of Louisiana lost power during that last hurricane. Um, and so what I'm saying is that person who wrote the documents was from the nineties. And I think the person, my best guess from the information that I know of today would, he would have to be, um, one of those uh, remote viewers. That's the word I was looking for. Mm. Um, now into the, the other, future, because because I always thought remote, and I don't know well, you know it well, but I thought they go in the past. They can go in the past or the future, because well, time is not like linear, as as we perceive it. It's actually all happening at the same time. But yeah, they they can go to past and future, um, and even present. I mean, the, the government used them to spy on the Soviets. Um, right. I know I've seen those claims, those documents of the CIA stuff. Yeah. I know there's yeah. documents that purports to support that. Yeah. Even even those documents where they visited Mars like a million years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm thinking? It's like <sighs> these conspiracy theories have been around for years. And on one hand, you could say you could react to what you just said and say it kind of feels like it's always down the road always a couple of years down the road on the other hand you could say well you know things are strange thing and, and i've been exposed to a lot of freaky information that makes me go you know what i gotta leave open the possibility that everything that you that i thought was normal you know living in the matrix aliens can't be real there can be no non-human intelligence here um it, atheists just kind of go to school, come home. That's life. That's all there is. I got to leave open the possibility that there is something much deeper going on that we don't fathom. And that's what you're saying. And that's that's what this yeah. alternative that's what this alternative um, conspiracy theory mindset suggests. And it sounds like you're telling me your experience with these somehow a remote viewer, possibly, you know somehow got these documents in the hand of your manager well here's here's the tricky part and this is the part that i'm trying to understand my best and is if that person who handed me the documents he told me that he got them at a library but if he's not from this time period because to me if you saw me in videos and i did the honk honk thing when i didn't even do them at that time would suggest that you're from the future. And that's the only possible thing that I can really think of. Now, could a remote viewer see that? Yeah, but that was not from, from his thing. I don't think he was a remote viewer. And, and he ended up, after I was done with my report, he ended up leaving and going somewhere. So I'm wondering if time travel actually exists. Well, a lot of people wonder that. And 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 then you got John McCarthy. You you know him, right? Um I know of him. I don't I wasn't I don't I didn't follow live uh his sagas, but I know of him, yes. But but he tweeted out that a Russian time traveler just came back and in September they're going to switch um they're going to they're going to nominate Michelle Obama as basically well he didn't say michelle obama but somebody down below said michelle obama as the new nominee this and, year and yeah and see that came up in my documents too not michelle obama but it did talk about that the vice president would not be the nominee for the election hmm. and i'm also okay now this may seem very strange and it may be because i read the documents pretty fast a little bit during this time 
that that could be why I have so much confusion. But there, and and I'm not for sure if this happens, so don't take it to heart. But I think there could be a possibility of a fake Trump death. And I know that sounds a little bit insane, hmm. um, but we might see him die and then something happens because there's supposed to be some kind of event that happens. And, and I'm not I'm not for sure whether my mind just because there was a whole Tupac thing during the time we grew up where we thought he faked his death. Right. But I remember him surviving assassination attempts. And for some reason, my mind thought he was dead because I could have swore that somebody died during this time. Uh, hmm. And I was right about Biden not being the nominee. Um, and I think he's about to be impeached or 25th. Um, but, um, but I remember some kind of event happened. And then it was like, who they call the most hated or Trump like reemerged. And then, then there was the election, I think. There's there's some kind of weird stuff that's gonna happen here soon. That's just You don't think the weird stuff happen has happened yet? No, things get weirder. <laughs> things get stranger. Mm. Like like this is this is the time where I was talking about in the last time where the financial collapse is probably gonna happen or we're gonna see it begin to happen. They've already planned a financial collapse to happen in 20, 2026. And I think this is just the beginning of it. And I think that's why Donald Trump is suggesting to change taxes um, to keep more money in our pockets. Because if inflation does go up high, we will need more money in this current system. Because I'm not quite sure when the quantum financial system kicks in or 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 any of that because those documents on the the office on the occ.gov talked about that that there was there was a currency collapse running parallel with the quantum financial system and i know world war three is about to happen so i'm not for sure whether this quantum financial system happens before we go to war with china or after we go to war with china and the, why is it going to be China? Um, well, it's going to be China, Russia, and Iran. I mean, Iran's already trying to kill the president or Trump, and um, China. Well, okay, so that goes all the way back to Goldman Sachs creating bricks two months after 9 11. And in those documents on the Goldman Sachs website, it states building a better economy. Sound familiar? Build back better. Mm hmm And so BRICS and Goldman Sachs has a very close relationship. Um, and they started BRICS, and the whole plan was for it to come up by 2050. And where people think 2030 is the goal, 2030 is just a small goal. 2050 is the true goal. And... I don't know why it's that date yet, but that's something I'm looking into. Um, because if you think about it, BRICS, its final thing is supposed to be like China's supposed to be, China's supposed to replace America by 2050. And so that means that we have to go to war with them. You what know? about their birth rate? You know, don't, don't they have like a birth rate problem? Um, they could, but I think a lot of this is going to be fought with machines. Well, they, they have a lot of metals, you know. Mm. Um, and that might be another reason why Congress, like, uh, I hate to say it, ladies, but you might have to be signing up for the draft here soon. And mm. Sorry, I, ladies. Yeah, I hate saying that, but but I did talk to a woman who um, was in the army, and more than likely, you wouldn't see like frontline action. And this war is going to be a little bit different in that, like, China has like machine guns that walk around on legs. 
Right, I've seen those. Yeah, and they have microwave technology. I, I don't think a lot of people know it, but China and India were in a war during COVID over a border dispute, which to me was kind of odd because India is a part of BRICS. I mean, the I is India. Right. And it that was kind of interesting and kind of strange. Um, but now they're working closely together. But Iran and Russia and China are in Ukraine. So, I mean, World War, I mean, Iran is selling uh, those drones to Russia. Um, and anybody who thinks anything that China and Russia are good, please reconsider that. I know they're trying to advertise Putin as like, oh man, this is the guy. He's taking it on against the elite. But if you really research the guy, he's a part of the elite. And he's he's a part of their system. That's why he's there in Russia, and that's why he's dominating there. And they're trying to take out the United States. I mean, Russia even has a billboard in their country that says that Alaska is theirs. Yeah, so, provocative. So they're they're not like Putin's not going to save the United States. What do you think is going on in Alaska? Or at, I was thinking Antarctica. Speaking of oh. alternative clips and conspiracies, because we have to acknowledge that you know we are talking about conspiracy theories. We really yeah. are. Yeah, and that's well, okay. I Right? Are we not, or do you disagree? I mean, maybe because not a lot of people know this. Yeah, it may, it's maybe it's an unfair term, but it, it, it's the a, only reason I say that it, it kind of is an unfair term because the CIA kind of coined it to discredit people, is what they did. But it, we can look at it as a positive light, I guess. Like um, we'll refer to it like information that people may not know that right. has a high degree of being true maybe yeah well that That's would be mind-blowing so so yeah. so what is this narrative that we're we're talking about so far um you receive documents tipping you off to future events and they're unfolding in your opinion and it's they all leading to what world war three um but we do win world war three and after World War III, um, a better world will come about. That is what I got. Like, I mean, seriously, it does feel like the, like we're in the end of times and stuff like that. Do not be afraid. Do not listen to anybody about a nuclear holocaust or anything like that because I did not read anything about that. I'm not saying that nukes may not be used. Um, but I don't think any country really wants to use nuclear weapons due to the damage that it causes. <clears throat> Although there are there are some nukes that have no fallout. Right. Um, but I know China China wants the United States for its foreign land. So they want to have some kind of control over here. And they want control in Canada because Canada is fixing to be the world's leading um, exporter of water. Um, but that might change if an ice age happens because all of that depends on a certain glacier melting and if an ice age happens, then that's not going to happen. So we're talking about World War III where the United States becomes emerges the victor and we're talking about cataclysmic global changes being at a period. So you're telling me we're in a period of great war about to be once again and yes. great climatological environmental change yes think? yes yeah and an ice age is coming um it's and that's one thing that i don't like about this whole climate narrative is that it presents the whole warming factor and that we got to prepare for that but it's really an ice age that's coming and not very many people are prepared for that it's either what, that what, Go ahead, or, sorry, go ahead. or they were they were they knew that this ice age is coming 
I would like to say it's the big ice age, not the mini ice age, but it might be a mini ice age. When when does this begin? Do you think? And 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 is... I think it's already starting because you got the um, the Arctic Ocean melting, and that'll stop the the current that goes in on in the Atlantic that brings the warm air to Europe. And if that comes to a halt, then we're just automatically in an ice age. And so what, what might dropping. the impacts be, do you think? Well, that's what our founding fathers went through when they first arrived here. So definitely less farming time, more more snow, harsher, harsher cold. I mean, it's probably not going to affect Texas that much, but besides maybe cooler summers. But if we have the big ice age, then that's going to change a lot because that would freeze all of Canada over and most of the northern United States. And you wouldn't see land for thousands upon thousands of years. And so while we're on the subject of changes in the earth, what is this micronova thing I okay. was here about? Okay. So, okay. And why so, don't you believe in it? Because I have a note here that says you don't believe in yeah so i talked about the last time because i thought what the guy was showing was right but after doing a lot more research into him and i'm not trying to destroy anybody i want to make that I'm, I'm just trying to get the truth out um but i don't believe that's the case when i looked everything up there's a um i think he's confusing a miyaki event as this micronova and a Miyake event, you've heard of the Carrington event, right? Refresh my memory, please. Okay, so like in the 1850, I think it was like 1859, the Carrington event was basically there was a solar flare, a CME, I think it was, that hit Earth. And we had the telegraph system that time. And like if anybody was using the telegraph at that time, it would like shock or electrocute. Not like severely, I don't think anybody died from it but it took out it, it did major damage to the telegraph system and so one of these um but it wasn't recorded in the geologic record now a miyaki event is recorded in the geological record and it leaves this brilliant 10 and and um i think it was carbon 14 um imprint in trees that they found in the tree rings and and uh, it's it's a very very powerful like solar flare that comes at Earth that can cause things to be disrupted. And when we're talking about the Younger Dryas, the best person who I've ever heard research this topic, who who goes into the best details, would probably be Randall Carlton. So if you've ever listened to his podcast or him talk on Joe Rogan. This guy is really good at dissecting. I, I disagree with him on the Freemason part, but but that's I, I can digress and, and Well, what is what is the yeah. uh, what is Younger Dryas again? It was a like... um that that was when the Ice Age happened and everything melted. Um, and one of the things that he talked about and that was, was oh that was and therefore the flood. That's what they say was yes, like the Great Flood. Yes, but even more, man, he goes into to more like he also thinks he knows where Atlantis is. Like uh, in the uh, the Atlantic, like the Mid Atlantic um, Ridge. What is it that you disagreed with him on? Um, was it important? The Freemasons. What What about it? Um, it? That <coughs> excuse me. That he doesn't he doesn't think that they have played any kind of major role, and I guess like with the powerful elite and stuff like that. I kind of disagree with him on that. I think that they have, but were but not everybody in Freemason would know about it either because it's not like these these people who control. I would like to say that influence the direction that society goes. They have infiltrated every secret society. They have infiltrated every race. They have infiltrated every religion, and they use that turn people against and to create division is what they do 
that's why I don't like people talking bad about the Jews or necessarily I don't like Islam, but it's not really the people of, who believe in Islam that are the actual issue. It's not the Jews that are the actual issue. It's these people that masquerade as these individuals. That to what end? And, and so to what end then? So there's an elite, the Freemasons. Okay, uh, how does that connect to the Younger Dryas event, uh, according to the theory? Um, okay, well, um, how does it connect to the young? Um, I would say that there was a war that happened after Younger Dryas that not a lot of people talk about. Plato talked about it, um, and Solon talked about it, and the Egyptians talked about it. And these were the winners of the war, and, and that's where we got into that whole... Um, thing with uh, uh, remember that one that we did about uh, Noah and his children right and and then um, Canaan was the offspring of basically Ham screwing his mother and that's why Noah cursed Canaan and but it was Ham that took over the lands of Shem um, and they were they became dominant as the Canaanites and the Phoenicians. And it was this group that infiltrated everything in society from even that day. Because if you look at the way how the United States downfall is happening, it's the same way that the Roman Empire fell and everything like that. They they embraced what we would call like, uh, or what, what Christians would call like major sins, like transgenderism, you know, uh, like... Uh, pedophilia, things of that nature. Like, uh, Does this group then want to cause the downfall of nations or does it just, does it just do. happen? They do because this is how, this is how they become more wealthier because we're on a fiat system. Okay. So with gold, they can come in and buy everything cheap and they can switch the power to where they want it. And that's China right now, to where they can become more brutal and more satanic. Um, because right now, what we have is we have, uh, uh, like the the three state, the three city states. Um, you have Washington D.C., which is the military power. You have London, which is the banking power, the financial system. And you see um, Vatican City as the spiritual system. And they're trying to do the same thing with Russia, China, and Iran. Iran would be the spiritual system, Islam. China, the banking system with BRICS. And Russia, we see it as now the military might of BRICS. So they're trying to embed those three same systems they're trying to make that transfer over. And so they have to destroy the whole foundation of the West to embrace what uh, a paper, and there was a peer reviewed paper that I read on, on my YouTube channel that um, it was called uh, the ill liberal order, which would be the opposite of the West. And how they, um, how the, they admired that system and that the transfer of power is basically going to head that way. But we do stop that. Um, we do not so well in the beginning of World War III. As you can tell, we're not doing very well. But um, Putin, I would say, doesn't have much longer to live. Um, and the last report that came out in 2018 was that he had Parkinson's and cancer. And I don't know if that ends up being the cause of his death um, right. or if it's something else. But Russia ends up switching sides. And so Russia right now, yes, they are the bad guy. But something happens in their country. I'd like to say it because Putin dies. And they end up switching sides to the West. Iran, I don't think, lasts very long. Uh, but China is the hard one. Um, they're they're going to be the, the, the hardest battle. 
but with us and Russia together, it's, I'm hoping that it's not too hard. And then a new, I, and I would say a new spiritual era is born after this because we're supposed to come into a time of peace. Like after this war is over and a lot of truth is given, there is a, there's, there's peace after that. That, that was like the final thing that I read hmm. and where it comes with this whole Micronova and some of these other alternatives. Like I know that Jimmy thinks that the re the recount structure, the eye of the Sahara is Atlantis. After seeing what Randall Carlton said about that, maybe I disagree with him on that. Um, but so what was Atlantis? I was going to ask you. Maybe you uh, can give me a the, thought or the, two on Atlantis. I think I think it's the North Mid Atlantic Ridge, and when all that ice melted, one one of the things that um, Randall Carlson said that I never even thought about was, okay, so you're sitting on a padded chair right now, right? So what happens when you when you lift off that chair? It kind of comes up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the ice was compressed so far on land that when it started melting the land started to rise up a little bit that would cause a lot of chaos um actually i mean the whole event of younger dries caused a lot of chaos it was meteor showers um with the nyaki event um that started the warming and that re-triggered the warming i should say because before warming was starting to happen and then um something happened that that triggered an ice age in this warming period and then um and then um the asteroids and and everything like that oh no yeah ended up uh, causing the meltdown of this whole thing which ended up like well we're, and we're probably talking about asteroids that hit at different times because i think it i think the asteroids started the event and it also ended the event um so it was like a pure like total destruction during that time and but the interesting thing about that time though is that we can tell from like lobe Tepe, Tepe and everything like that that they whoever lived during this time knew that these things were going to happen because we see underground tunnels just not over there by turkey but also in israel and other places even even in the americas there were people living underground and these are things that do need to be researched and everything like that these people were prepared for this event and i think that's what you know when they talk about noah's ark i think that's what they're talking about was that it wasn't a boat that they were floating on they were living underground and it just resembled Hmm. About because of the way how everything was right this was our temporary living arrangement exactly for about maybe a thousand years hmm. um because it took time for everything to to happen and this event was like wow. about it lasted about i would say from 12.3 bce to like 9.6 bce so it was a good amount of time to forget a lot of things. And, and so, so the idea being that we've had advanced civilizations way, before. way more, way more advanced than we could. Yeah, I, and, I believe so because so of the pyramids. Did, does the guy that yeah. was on Joe Rogan believe that? He's not ready to say that. Um, I'm ready to say that, but and is that not. and is that it is. Are the remnants of those civilizations who are in the UFOs and the UAPs and are there underground bases and Oh yeah. Yeah, I would well I'm not for sure if they're they're human, maybe either alien or extra dimensional. They might know, but I'm not for sure like any human. Um right. or so any, you don't think so you don't family think family lived through so, that. So the, right. So the UAP phenomenon, the underground non-human non-human intelligence underground bases that whole side of things you don't think there's any um there's any relationship to ancient humans um through family maybe like like the, the descendants of 
you know, the, the Canaanites probably know because that was information that they probably kept to themselves. Um, I would say that maybe the elite know about that. Um, so what do you think is going on with these UAPs and, and all of these things? I know people, you ask people about this and they say, well, dude, it's layers deep and wide. I mean, you've got aliens, you've got interdimensional, you've got uh, time travel. I mean, so what yeah. do you think is going on with or this or is it just advanced military tech i know you don't think so but no no, no. some of it is advanced military tech and they they've admitted that um i mean um they released the like in 2018 they released a um um the triangle ufo you know that one they actually released well it's a triangle we'll just put it that way. i know what a triangle is put it that way yeah yeah and it's a flying vehicle but they released a patent to that in the public domain. The military did. The uh, Navy, if I'm thinking right. So if they release that, because the military patent process is a little bit different, and they can keep that secret. So they took something out of the military patent office and put it in the public domain, which means that they already know how to use this tech. They. So what do you think, you know, the time, but... So what is this David Grush guy about? You know, the, the, there's guys in the intelligence community and they the people are oh. talking about non-human intelligence. So what the hell are they talking about? Well, that, in your would, be the, that would be the aliens or the extra dimensional. And you think they're hiding underground? Is um, that the theory? Possibly they could be walking around us and we don't even know it. Yeah. I think some of them have this um, technology um that allows them it resembles shape shifting and for some kind of electromagnetic technology that allows them to basically blend in with us make a make them look like us and before anybody thinks i'm maybe like weird by saying that we actually currently have technology right now the military does that can actually make them appear invisible. Right. Yeah, no, and like like the saying goes, um, any advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so... So aliens, so there's multiple types of aliens here and we just don't even know. Why don't we know it then? Or some people do, but why don't, why don't the mainstream? Why is, it, why is it not mainstream? I think it's more of the humans that are trying to prevent that information because they, they they try and use the same excuse that they always do and that's you guys you guys aren't ready to know and my whole thing is well how do you know that we're not ready to know unless you tell us you know and the more that you say that i'm like the more you just need to come out with it like i think we are ready to know i think we have been ready to know and the less that you tell us just creates fear around the subject. Um, I mean, we know that these aircraft have landed and we know like they've, they've crashed, they've crashed before Roswell. Um, there's even one in the United States that you can look up. I think it happened in the 1890s or eighties that it, it hit, I forget which city it was in, but it hit a city in the desert that people didn't know what to do, but they ended up burying everything, and it still leaves a radioactive trail to this day. Uh, they buried it, and they buried the body, and I think they said that the body was not human. And I think they thought it was maybe an angel was what they were maybe hoping. Maybe it was one of the good guys. I don't... Um, hopefully maybe it was but either way um so roswell wasn't the first incident there were there were many incidents before that happened and um um and you you've um um so they've been studying this technology for quite some time i would like to say probably earlier than what we know they just didn't know what to do with it because also tesla knew a lot of stuff and I think they were kind of waiting for him to pass away to get more experience with it because he was really 
the only person who really keyed into everything, and he was trying to push this technology out too. Um, because, and and I think it's technology that we had before. Like I think it's the energy that the pyramids were producing, and things of that nature. Like because there's pyramids all over the world, and it seems like they were created as maybe some kind of like energy generator to shoot energy out. And for us to to somehow I, I don't I don't exactly I guess just being around it um, it just somehow connects to whatever we're using I'm not I'm not quite sure on that part maybe kind of like a Tesla tower in a way how you just have to be around it and it just energizes whatever device you have um, right. because that's kind of like what Tesla was doing right and hmm. all i know is that we've messed around with this stuff for a long time and we're starting to see little bits of it come into the public domain now if i was thinking right did you talk to ashton right yes i did okay so we're going along the same lines of that technology where i wanted to talk about something that i i thought was just amazing that i just learned how they can use some kind of like plasma generator to basically break down oil and like if it was used in this it would instead of the exhaust being carbon dioxide the exhaust would be like oxygen sweet and it and and the plasma technology can do that because it, it um it disrupts the um uh, um like the nucleus to where everything's like freestanding I guess it, I would say that's kind of maybe how the sun is able to create the elements and stuff like that. Well, it's it's over my head a little bit, to say the it, least. It is a little bit over my head, too. I. But I know Ashton, you know, he, he he's a guy pursuing what you would call alternative science. And he's got a lot of followers and he does what seems to be rigorous research and his conclusion seems to be that there is tremendously advanced technology, meaning doomsday weapons that make nuclear weapons look like children's toys. And there is another side to the other side to that coin is that aliens are here and that we probably got it from them. But he actually, interestingly, doesn't care about the alien piece. He cares about the technology piece because, as he would say, that's what affects him in his daily life. I, I... I go right to, I want to know what's going on. What's the narrative? There are aliens here. We have technology. It's what, what the F. So it's, you know, many people have these thoughts, man. Um, and there's, there appears to be something going on. The question is, what is the truth? What is the truth? It's, it's hard to fathom. The truth is hard to fathom. That's uh, what we started with. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's so because of miscommunication i mean right there i mean just the way how we communicate can obscure truth yeah um but truth 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 it's like to be fully honest maybe we will never know the full truth until we actually die right. um right but i'm hoping that we do and i believe that we can and um to me we're starting an exciting time to where we're going to get those answers and this is this is where like we, we got to raise the vibration of consciousness like humanity is in a very negative state we got to get people to to think positive mm. to and I know that's going to be hard, especially in a time of war coming up and everything kind of falling apart. Um, but to me, that would give more reason to think positive. Thinking positive is the beginning to raising your consciousness of vibration. Um, when I did my research um, on my dissertation, it was heavily based Remind uh, us what you remind us what your dissertation was. My, uh, my dissertation was um, restorative justice in the workplace, um, mostly through love and forgiveness. And this was like a PhD or an MBA. PhD, yeah, yeah. I'm a doctor. Yeah. 
I just, um, want, the, I just want the audience to, to have not, that. I, I really wasn't pursuing a doctorate. I just kind of fell onto me because I wanted to research this. Um, but, um, but okay, yeah, I have, an, I have a BA in English, and a Master of Business Administration, and a Doctor of a Doctor of Management in Organizational Leadership. Right on. Um, and so there was a and my master's degree. This is one of the things that inspired me to pursue my doctorate. I read this book by Anderson and Adams, and it was called Mastering Leadership. And it talked about how right now humanity, about 5% of humanity is in the egotistical mind. 75% is in the reactive mind. And both of these together equal the lower mind. And so 80% of our population is in what we call the lower mind. Then comes the beginning stages of the higher mind which is the creative mind. So in my mind, creativity is the key to escaping the, um, the reactive mind. Art, um, conversation, just doing something that furthers your brain. It can even be mathematics. It, just, uh, it takes a, a different degree of thinking, getting outside of yourself. Right. So the creative mind is the initial stages. Um, and 15% of people are at that stage. And then there's the integral mind where there's 5% of people. And then unitive minds are extremely rare. I would like to say I'm a unitive mind. When I took the test, I was rated on the cusp of unitive. I was like integral, but on the cusp, I was like three points away what is the what is integral and unitive integral is you see the higher systems and you learn think of it as a microcosm macrocosm do you understand that yeah i understand those two terms okay um to where like the the macrocosm can affect the microcosm and the microcosm can affect the macrocosm there's a relationship there mm -hmm. and that's what the integral mind sees it sees the bigger systems and how the bigger systems affect the smaller systems like me pointing out how BRICS is going to eventually cause the downfall of the United States dollar where other people focus on microeconomics as this whole like no it has to do with supply and demand and stuff like right. that gotcha and so I'm I'm looking at the bigger systems and I see how the bigger systems affect the smaller systems now, unitive, you see everything as one. And you understand how things play a part that way. And uh, the interesting thing was this was scientific research. But scientific research uh, came that unitive was the highest form of mind. And it must be highly spiritual. So according to science, spiritual, being spiritual is, will lead you to your highest form of your overall being. Hmm. That is interesting. And, yeah. And uh, so it has, and, and I'm trying not to put the emphasis on religion. I would say it's more spiritual. Religion's corrupt. Spiritualism is not. It's kind of like how I like to see it. Um, because it's you defining your own meaning in the way how you kind of perceive it. Um, but the main reason why that interested me was because I knew this person, the Great Uniter, was going to come. And, and this new religion was going to come in a way. Or spiritualism, the way that you want to see it. Where, um, and the person who showed me these 1998 documents later on kind of hinted something towards that. Like, I'm not too knowledgeable. Like, I think that maybe the Gnostics were kind of coming out in the late 1990s, but not a lot of people had read it. This person who was talking to me about these documents was probably about 20 years old. 
Um, and he seemed to know, like, one of the things he said to me, because I was in a religious conversation at work, I didn't know much about the Bible, but we were talking about creation. And he said, the most weirdest thing was he said, Satan created humanity, but God breathed the soul into it. Mm. And that stuck with me. And I was just kind of like, I was like, man, the Bible doesn't say that. But if you look at Gnosticism, it talks about that, how the God of the Old Testament was the evil one. And, right. and Jesus, um, that's why Jesus challenged the Pharisees and stuff like that. And that's why Jesus also said, like, the most two powerful things you can do is love your neighbor as yourself and, you know, love God. And that sums everything up. And most importantly, forgiveness. A, a high major, um, you know, everything that his message was based on love and forgiveness. And that was so different at that time because everything else was about war and power right. and prestige and so i think love and forgiveness are two main things needed for unity um for a unit of mind and through studying you know um restorative justice you know i came to find out that it was actually based on like the founder based it on the new testament love and forgiveness and i think that's a, a definitely a better way to go and i'm not saying that it's easy because i think love and forgiveness are probably some of the hardest things for us to shift towards because we're used to revenge and vengeance and people coming after us and stuff like that um that it's it's just sometimes maybe hard for us to perceive to actually forgive somebody but yeah and that ties into what we started off by saying about maybe that's why so many people don't try to understand each other is because they have resentments and they're feeling negative exactly. yes actually i'll um so you know and that's probably about all i gotta say about that at the moment i guess but a I new know. religion a new religion is coming up and it it's kind of tailored toward that i wouldn't say it's strictly not gnosticism but it's surrounding around that i'll tell you most of what i believe is uh, i believe in jesus's love and forgiveness i um believe in in buddhism a lot um especially the meditation the illusion part everything like that and when it comes to history, I would have to say Hinduism has probably the most, and in Hinduism, where some people may disagree with me on this, but it's actually not too far off from Christianity. They have a trinity too, Vishnu, Krishna, and um, um, it starts with a D, Brahma. Um, they have a trinity too. Um, and I think that their lesser gods are more like angels, but they actually go into detail about these, um, these uh, vehicles that were seen. Devas, right? Yeah, I've yeah. heard that term. And I was telling people from the get go, I'm I didn't even know this was in Hinduism when I started talking about it, but it's mercury. Mercury is a key ingredient to making all this happen. At it spinning at a certain um, force, um, velocity, um, creates anti-gravity. And they actually detail Mercury in, in their documents as being the main thing that makes everything happen the way it does with these vehicles. And so what are these vehicles? Who are the occupants, according to the Hindu? Um, and well, I mean, at one time it was us and other other alien beings as well, because um, I mean, Vishnu was blue, so definitely right. not from Earth. Wow, he was. Uh, 
he was a uh, he was uh, from Avatar. Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, he was he was uh, from the planet in Avatar. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, man. Yeah. So yeah, all yeah. right. So I mean, with all of that said, let's shift gears into some other topics okay. and let's see if we can do maybe within the next thirty minutes run through the run through them. Okay. Um, so you wanted to talk to me about the influencer thing. Yeah, yeah, we, we kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, but there's, um, okay, so we talked about the Micronova part. Now we're going to talk about the Nasara Jasara part. Nasara Jasara, I think, is a PSYOP. What the hell is it? Every time I Google it, I forget what it is. It, it does maintain some of the elements of, like, the quantum financial system. But this, man, I swear I heard this back in the day, like, maybe either after I graduated high school or before I graduated high school, which was 2002. Um, and, but most of it has to do with the um, goal coming up. Back in the day, it was about gold, gold coming back up. And... The, the quantum financial system wasn't a part of it back in the day, but now it's been incorporated in. And apparently China and they think that China and Russia are good guys, but they're not good guys. They are not good guys. Um, and then, but one of the, the, there's two things that kept me from fully embracing it because I wanted to believe in it so much. But when I take myself out of it and I take my desire out of it, I'm like, no, nah, it can't be true. E even even though Trump wants to do away with certain taxes, I think that just mostly has to do with inflation coming back. I don't think he's necessarily going to implement the quantum financial system in the beginning. I think we're going to wait. I think that's going to happen until after World War III. I could be wrong. To me, it just makes more sense. Um, and if you want me to explain why I think that makes more sense, I can tell you after I talk about my sorry to sorry. Um, but the one issue that I think I have the most problem with was in this story of Nassar to Sara, they say that the military forced Clinton at gunpoint to sign the documents to it. And I'm like, well, if you're the body that wants to hold up law and order, then, you know, being coercive would not be something that you would do. Like, I mean, according to law, if you point some a gun at somebody's head and you say, sign a document, it automatically is invalid. It does not exist. Am I correct on that? Correct. Okay. Well, yeah. I'd have to confirm if it's voidable or void, but yes, yes, in principle, yeah. either way, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's it wouldn't make sense. Absolutely correct. And that would be one of the things that I have the most problem with about Nassar and Nassar. Uh, and probably one of the reasons why I think it's a PSYOP, um, because it paints this overall picture of paradise, too. And I'm always wary about things that are too good to be true. Especially since I know that we are going to go through some more chaos here soon in the future. Um, so, it, it's just basically like, it mostly has to do with the quantum financial system and AI kind of controlling the aspect and issuing an era of peace, which some of that aspect is true. Um, and they do talk about taxes going away in which Trump is doing that, but I, I don't see that in respect to Nassar Jassara. Like I said, I, I see that in respect to we're fixing to come into a huge depression and it's not going to be good. And so the more money that we have in our pockets is going to help us stay alive through that high inflationary period, however long that might be. 
and I read a peer-reviewed document where it talked about three scenarios that the United States has the option of probably going through. And one of them, which was scenario two, talked about a Great Depression happening from 2026 to 2035. Um, now, check this out. It talked about trying to use green energy in all of these three scenarios. In all three scenarios where they talked about using green energy, they talked about widespread, widespread blackouts would always occur. And in the documents, basically, green energy will not solve our, our energy needs. And it won't. And we shouldn't sacrifice ourselves for what I call like a climate hoax. The sun is... Okay, so the sun, for one, controls the climate. But one thing that a lot of people don't know either is that the Earth has actually moved its axis just a little bit. And this is going to change the way that light comes. And this can cause an ice age. This could be why we're seeing such weird weather. It may not have anything to do with climate. I mean, the Earth moving, even though it's been a little bit, is a big deal when it comes to climate. Mm -hmm. And, oh, oh yeah, yeah. This this is going to hint a little bit on Ben um, and the whole Micronova. Because he talks about that it's the North Magnetic Pole that's moving. It's not the North Magnetic Pole that's moving it's the south magnetic pole the geographic north is where the south magnetic pole is and you know that because the arm of the compass points north to that direction which what would a north magnet be attracted to the south magnet i see so the south pole is up top the north pole is up on the bottom near antarctica so that's that's all backwards um so the south magnetic pole is moving towards russia but it's not going to go any you know it's not going to go below um russia but it, it'll probably stop there and it has to do with when i was it has it has to do with the earth moving and science is trying to say that we're the cause of it which i don't necessarily think so i think it's just part of that long cycle that occurs it's a 41 uh I forget the name of the cycle. I, I don't think it's like Mikalkovich or something like that. Um, I forget how to pronounce it. It or doesn't matter. What it is. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But it's a long cycle. It's like a 41,000 year cycle and a 100,000 year cycle. But within these cycles, there's what they call mini cycles that progress things. And I think we've hit like a 10,000 year cycle within the long cycle that progresses these things by just a little bit. And I think we're going to see the biggest changes when the next 10,000 year cycle happens. When that happens, then we're really going to see a, a big change uh, because that's when um, a new axis is supposed to be um, happening on the earth to where it's, it's moving its location very subtly um, over a long period of time. But that can also lead to catastrophic events that um, do occur. And those events can happen fast or they can happen slow, just depending on what's going on. Um, you know, in our world at that time um, with the weather pattern. Um, Tell me about your novel. I want to jump to that. Okay. Um, right now, um, it's a fifty-chapter novel. Um, I, I'm I'm on chapter forty. I still got to get to uh, programs um, to overview it, make sure everything's correct and everything like that. So I'm expecting it to come out. My plan date was September 23rd to October the 11th. I would say it's probably morally going to come in the October area. Um, but so the the protagonist in there is Terry L. Um, that's what my whole social media is about. It's about uh, um, connecting my novel with um, 
social media and what I call a time war um, that begins about 300,000 years ago with the Anunnaki, um, Intian and Lil, um, coming from the planet Nibiru, um, to do something to the human race. Um, the, um, and Teriel is a part of that story on Tiamat, um, is where the story begins, and, um, it's kind of the beginning of the whole alien question and things of that nature. Perfect. Well, now, but, I, now um, I want to read it. There you go. And, and, um, my novels, um, pertain to a lot of the knowledge that I've acquired. Um, I'm just writing down and putting my novels in there because um, I feel like that's the best way that I can express the knowledge. It's how one of the ways that I was able to retain so much information to the 98 documents that I talked about was because of the poems, because of some poetry that I wrote. Yeah, your poetry I, is amazing, I got to say. Thank you. <laughs> um, 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 they, like, two of them that really hit the nail on the coffin on some of those that you would read um, that I wrote in 2003-2004 was there's, there's one called An Emergency um, and another one called Pestilence. Um, and I wrote those because um, An Emergency deals with the whole hatred topic as hatred would build, war would come. Pestilence describes the virus situation that would come. And it actually, yeah, there, um, uh, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything's all tied in. The, the poetry is also connected to everything. The documents that, um, I read are eventually connected to everything. Even my whole doctorate stuff that I'm going to do after this and some of the nonfiction novels will also eventually be incorporated into everything. That's because that's one of the things that I'm trying to demonstrate is the whole unitive thing um, throughout this whole process. And so my novels are going to go to places probably I would like to say that no novelist has ever explored before. And I, I like that. Kurt Vonnegut maybe explored that and um, Slaughterhouse Five. Um, if you've ever read that, Kurt Vonnegut, what? I don't remember it, but I, I did read it. Yeah, Kurt Vonnegut is probably one of my favorite authors. And, um, but he kind of explored that in a way because he was a character in his book. Um, he put himself because he was uh, captured by the Germans, and when he was, there was a character in the story talking to one of the characters in the prison that was actually him in the prison, um, who he based the character off of. Um, so that he kind of explored that a little bit, um, but I'm kind of putting it in a huge portion to where it's kind of like my research in a way because I'm trying to find some answers to some things as well. And I do it best by writing. Right. No, I looked, I, I was so do you consider it fiction? Um, yes and no. <laughs> so perfect. Yeah. There, there are probably like elements that. of it that are fiction. And if you like Carl Jung, um, then you'll definitely like it because individuation is just a good way to write a story so i have those elements in there and it's heavily symbolic and you'll notice when it comes up but yeah it basically starts with the whole topic of humanity versus aliens all right all right well i'll pre yeah. let me know when i can pre-order um, well, it probably won't be pre order You'll just probably be able to order it when it comes out. So. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, and that's very interesting. And so you're almost done, uh, basically, 40 out of 50. That's pretty incredible, dude. Yeah. So um, then the next point we should get to is 
how has common law, which I think is just judge made law, yeah. right? That's what common law is. Um, how has that well, messed up the justice system? You know, a king created that, right? No. Yeah, common law comes from um, like what a, all the um, like uh, the founding fathers and stuff like that. When they refer to common law, they're talking about um, I forget the king's name, but I think it was around the 11th or 12th century he came up with this. Um, but it's basically what our judicial judicial system uses currently today, and so in England. Um, before common law came about, it was basically local autonomy that ruled. In other words, the community would judge you according to whatever because um, they felt that it was best that the community knew who you were and they knew your circumstances in life and that when it came to a punishment system that they knew best the best way to to punish you. so you're saying so your point here is that common law is really a word we could use for decentralization or centralization no 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 this was before common law. no but i'm saying but i'm saying oh. i'm saying is the point here is the big point here that before common law there were decentralized justice systems and they were better exactly. and i know so i can see where you're going so yeah. common law is the centralization of justice which exactly. is and I'm with you, and um, and keeping in mind that this was your 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 dissertation. I mean, you know what you're talking about with justice. So, yeah, you're saying the centralization of justice has made it worse. Yes, because what this king did, and and I learned this through my dissertation too. Um, this this is where I actually learned it when I was researching um, restorative justice was that the king at that time, what he did was he took that local autonomy away and so every crime that was committed was committed against the king the king became the sole victim right okay and so it didn't matter if you just stole something from somebody else there was always the king that you would have to go up against this and this transferred over here because when a crime is committed over here everything's against the state it's not actually against the victim. It's the state that has the unlimited resources to prosecute somebody. That is where everything gets messed up. And so you're saying the centralization of justice, giving resources to a state to prosecute, just throws off the incentives of true justice. Exactly. I'm with you. And, and, it, and if you're ever interested in learning more about that topic, I suggest you read a book by Sylvia Clute, and it's called Beyond Vengeance, Beyond Justice. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Just, uh, you said it so yeah. confidently. Let's just pretend it, that was correct. Yeah. Beyond no, Vengeance, but... beyond, beyond Justice, I think. Okay. Well, here's something like that. There's, enough, clue, there's yeah. enough clues here for anyone interested. They yeah. can look at it. There you go. Just, yeah. Just a, really good so, book. Awesome. But, but uh but yeah so i just wanted to say that you know i think when it comes to the justice system that this i think this is a major issue that needs to be solved because there's definitely issues in the justice system especially with the bar association and fuck them <laughs> yes i do agree <laughs> and, so what is the solution for the justice system um i do think we need to decentralize it and bring it more locally um, I think I, I, I agree with your friend uh, that, you know, we need to legalize drugs. I think that would be a first good step in releasing people out of prison that do have user based relations. But I want to add something in there that that I, I haven't heard him talk about. Maybe he has. But I think everybody who is about to be released, like something like this does happen. Um, like, I think they need to be psychologically evaluated because some people aren't ready to be really released. They need some kind of transition um, because they've been in institutionalized. And that's another issue that the prison system has created is that some people just commit crimes to go back to prison because that's the only thing that they know. And 
there are ways that we can get away from this institutionalization um, and maybe only use it for like and the major crimes. So really you had to be thoughtful and meaningful, intentional, yet to be had, yet to be done. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So, Interesting. All right. Well, that's pretty fascinating. So tell me now about abortion. That's our next topic. How do you okay. feel about abortion and why did you want to talk about it? I wanted to talk about it because there is, it, as ever since Roe vs. Wade, it has become a very heated topic. Um, I am pro-life uh, um, to a very high degree. Um, and But I'll explain that why later. But one of the things I wanted to make clear is that even though I'm pro-life, I do not believe that the solution to this issue is to put women who've had abortions in the prison. And I, I don't think... Well, I certainly think, not. I think that would just make everything a lot harder. Um, so I'm pro-life, but I'm not pro-jail. Like, I don't think any of those women belong in prison. What I do think needs to happen is... Um, so I, I I saw a commercial one day on uh, modernadoption.org, a very good company so far, I believe. Um, but they even have like a free counseling for women who've had an abortion because I've talked to women who've had an abortion and I know that's a very horrible experience for them. Um, and yeah, I think we need to try and find some way to make adoption more popular. And eventually somehow we, we need some kind of cultural revolution and cultural change on a good side to happen. Right. Um, but uh, this, they, they, they actually try to help them find parents. And um, if anybody wants to adopt, they, they have, they have lists for people who want to adopt and, and, you know, if there's some way that we can find some kind of middle ground to where, you know, adoption would be the better solution to this than what we have, I, I would definitely prefer that. And I would like to see some kind of organization that may be similar to Planned Parenthood, but without, without the abortion narrative, kind of jump to the forefront. Um, and the main reason that I would say that I'm against abortion is because I do perceive it as life from the very get-go. And the question that I answer is, or the question that I always ask is, you know, what has this life committed that what crime or, or what, what has it done that we just automatically do away with it without... To terminate even, it. To terminate it. Yeah, without any even any kind of due process in any way hasn't committed a crime hasn't even been given a chance yeah and then you get into the whole abortion conversation about personhood and where's the line drawn yeah well i think it starts right from the get-go i mean there's an organizing force to it like um like it follows it follows like the force of life follows the same steps as what you would call the flower of life um which is if you draw circles, well, just look up the flower of life, but it's a whole bunch of circles connected. And when eight of these circles form, it's called the seed of life. And it, that actually happens in the, uh, in the beginning stages. Once these eight cells form, it begins to create the heart. And in the heart, our brain cells and everything like that, neurons, stuff like that, that actually stay in you forever. Like your heart does have brain cells in it. And your heart, at sometimes, I do actually think that sometimes we may actually think with our heart. Its magnetic field is more powerful than the brains. And, and that's something I think we need to look more into. Well, either way, the point being the yeah. argument is once the process begins, yes. there's an honor, there's an honor and a duty to 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 facilitate it, not not yeah. end it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's an organized force at work. And 
that's just my opinion. And, and it's wrong to 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 oppose that. Uh, and I and I understand that and I respect yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, for me, it's at a high degree level. Um, but yeah, I just I just want that. But why did you? So why was it important that we talked about it again? I'm just kind of curious. Um, well, it's well because it's a heated topic. You see commercials on it all right, the time. Right, right. I just want to, and, and Texas law, um, or most people, I maybe don't understand because I think the news media kind of perversed it in a way. But uh, according to Texas law, that is the actual thing: is that they don't like if a woman actually, let's just say, they get an abortion after the six weeks. I think it's six weeks. Um, they don't put her in jail. They put the doctors in jail. So I wanted to make that clear that we're not like from my side, from my perspective, in no way um, are we trying to come down on like any woman who's actually trying to get it. You're just I'm, trying to prevent this from happening. Yeah, I would like to prevent it from happening. But if they do get it, we're not trying to punish them. And I think that's where a lot of confusion happens. I think in some states, the laws may be different, but I'd like Texas to set the standard for like the pro-life and that do not gel the woman. The doctors can be held more accountable because they're the ones who should be kept and updated to the law and stuff like that. And if they go to a different state, they, they didn't prosecute that woman for going to a different state for wanting to do that. And that's i guess the i guess the the you know the the person would a person listening would say brian you should say well then what we should do is we should not make it illegal to do the abortion or we sh but we should have it culturally you know how do we have a cultural revolution and so maybe you have to make it illegal but not punishable by jail okay there's nuance yeah, there's I, ways to do it and i think that's something that a lot of people confuse is some people think that law changes culture and i don't think law changes culture i think and culture just kind of comes organically on its own as consciousness evolves within us. And a law is not going to change it. It's just going to... Law follows. It's law gonna, follows culture. No, uh, maybe. 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 Sometimes it's an interesting it's, relationship between law yeah. and culture, for yeah. sure. And we've, yeah. you know, it's kind of been a theme, uh, one of the themes of our, of our chat tonight. Yeah. So... Is, do you want to mention something about diets? We, we've yes. got this interesting list of um, topics. You know, I, I brought that up even before RFK because I was talking to you about that beforehand. And then RFK talked about um, his whole thing. And so uh, I wanted to say that, um, but yeah, yeah, the nutrition and everything that he's doing is correct. Um, and I did check out like the carnivore per se diet. <clears throat> at the beginning, I was kind of against it. Kind of am a little bit, but I'm more in favor of a more rich protein diet with more meats than I am with fruits and vegetables. Like I would say that a majority of our diet should be meat and fat. Um, and then a little bit with um, a little fruits, a little vegetable and a little grain. Um, uh, that's the way how I kind of perceive it. That's, and, and, and actually that diet, like if you're looking to lose weight in a month, I would switch to a carnivore diet for about a month and, and you'll drop that weight because that's what I did during wrestling. And that's how I lost weight during wrestling, even though I did more extreme things like spitting into a can, wearing like five sweat sweats and a trash bag and a sauna, um, if, you know, I, I if, if I ever needed to lose weight, I know how to do it. <coughs> but, um, but with carnivore or something like that, um, I've read, I've heard people saying that one of the issues that they have is that they they have no control over eating in a way, and that kind of helps them. I'll say when I was doing nothing but eating meat, I I found myself to mostly be skipping breakfast and not eating till about three o'clock um so i don't know how they can continuously eat meat but i was basically fasting right. the week that i did do it um but i i do eat a few vegetables um and i do incorporate fruits um 
a few fruits like watermelon, cucumbers, cucumbers are vegetable, but you know, those are some of the ones. And bread. Bread, most bread is bad. You gotta be real careful eating bread. I love um, my toast. But I will tell you a really, really good bread. It's expensive. It's like here in Texas, it's about six dollars. But I love the name of it. It's called Dave's Killer Bread. I was hoping you would say that. Now, what's funny, <laughs> and I was actually going to say, I please be Dave's Killer Bread. But um, it just occurred to me that I haven't been eating that. Um, but I did. I, I was for a while. But okay. but I need to get back to it. Yeah. Why like, do you like uh, Dave's Killer Bread? Well, they use all organic ingredients. And they don't use... See, here's here's the problem with most bread is that they they bleach it um they they put it through some kind of processing system that really just eliminates all the good stuff and it's more poison to your body it's going to turn into sugar and it's going to feed the wrong systems in your body and it's going to probably make you tired it's probably going to cause an inflammation response and that's why a lot of people go to keto and they've been finding that on that diet that their inflammatory response is reduced and everything probably because i mean bread is pretty dominant in our diet when you look right. at it oh yeah and so an inflammation leads to a lot of other different illnesses and diseases even cancer yes you uh, yeah. Um, my wife is, is dealing with uh, an issue like that. Um, that hopefully acupuncture. We're gonna go to acupuncture. And oh, I'm out. so sorry to hear that. Uh, it's okay. I mean, we'll be thinking. I'll yeah. be thinking about her and you. Yeah. Um, she's doing good though. Good. Uh, but it it can, and and I don't think that what she's facing is actually dealing with diet. It's, it has to do with something else. Um, but. Uh, but these are things that can happen with bread and also certain vegetables. Um, vegetables and fruits, um, they're a lot harder on our body to digest. There's actually, it's actually weird. Like vegetables and fruits are digested in the intestines, but they're digested by it rotting. Um, that's what the bacteria does. Um, and meat is actually completely digested in our stomach. And it was, there was a video that I watched on YouTube who somebody had their colon removed and they had this bag right here. And he talked about it's weird that he, he actually thinks that the doctors telling him to eat more fruits and vegetables cause the inflammation response in his irritable and his IBS disease that caused him to eventually get his colon removed. Because he said that when he ate fruits and vegetables with his bag, it would fill up with air. And so I would say most of fluctuance has to do with eating fruits and vegetables. Right. Probably morally on the vegetable side. And I'm, I'm not saying there, there are some good vegetables um, that you can't process. Most of them are what they call root vegetables, but be wary of carrots. Somebody actually died from eating too many carrots. His skin actually turned orange and he overdosed on eating carrots. Um, yeah. Um, but, um, but when he said when he ate meat, that didn't happen. And that because he had to clean out his bag that vegetables you could still see, but meat would just turn into a goo. And so I guess the takeaway here is in terms of diet is to. I would eat. say, like I said, yeah, is that fruits and vegetables. Um, I would concentrate more on meat and less on fruits and vegetables, even though those are, I think, still important. Like I will still eat watermelon. I'll still eat broccoli. These, these are fruits and vegetables that are easier to digest. Um, cucumbers, pickles. Pickle juice is still good. Spices are okay. Cayenne pepper is good. Um, and be wary of carrots. Yeah. If you have carrots, I would say 
few. Um, potatoes, I would say, are so good. Um, uh, leafy vegetables, I would be wary of because of bacteria. <coughs> and and um, leafy vegetables are just leaves in themselves are not part of the plant that are supposed to be eaten. Um, and they actually have their own defense mechanisms. Like they can create their own pesticides and their own um, defense mechanisms. Actually, in the in the wilderness, like if a caterpillar starts eating a leaf, it'll send a signal up in the air, uh, a certain, I guess, smell for bees, and the bees will come and attack it. Hmm. And um, plants are conscious. They are. They have their own communication systems. Um, and the plants are conscient, conscious, so don't let that fool you. And they can actually see, they have photoreceptors. They don't have to have eyes. Right. Well, it makes you wonder, um, it, you know, what, what the implications of that are, of that statement are. Yeah. But, but I do still think that there needs to be more research into the diet area. Um, um, food is thy medicine. Uh, Pythagoras said that a long time ago, the person who came up with A squared, B squared equals C squared. Uh, but uh, it's very interesting, yeah. my friend. Uh, no, um, so let's bring this thing home by sharing with me your thoughts on the, the election and the events leading up to it. Okay, so I still think they're going to make Kamala Harris president, I think, before the election. And I think gotcha. we might see that before the end of this month or at the beginning of October, somewhere around there. That's the October surprise, maybe. That, that could be on their part, yeah. Because I think that they're noticing that she doesn't have the votes. Because there was even a news station that went around, and I think it was in California, they went into restaurants and they said, who are you voting for? And they said in almost every single restaurant that we went to, like, everybody said they were voting for Trump except for, like, one table. Right. And I was like, I was like, well, that tells you something. It's going to be hard for them to rig on her portion. So, uh, so I... So I think they definitely got to do something there. And see, that brings up the episode of The Simpsons, where they have Donald Trump dead and Kamala Harris is president. And I'm thinking that that scenario is before the election that they showed. They also have another one of Donald Trump being president after this situation. And I think some kind of later episode. And that's why I wanted to bring up the whole possibility of a possible fake death in this whole thing. I'm not actually sure if that's the way it goes or if Pretty interesting. Trump actually does die. And maybe it's J.D. Vance that is the, the actual great uniter and comes through everything and gets elected. I'm and that that could be it. I also talked about, um, or maybe God forbid, seriously, yeah. Trump is killed and uh, it goes to uh, an open contest and it is Vivek. Yeah, that 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 could be a possibility but too. I'm God forbid, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not I'm not trying to bring any of those scenarios sure, true, sure. but these are just real life situations that it could be facing because a person started questioning whether the 2024 election was going to happen in the documents. Cause like, so I'm not what sure. you're, okay. So we're coming full circle here. We're saying that it's like you said, it's going to get stranger yes. and it's going to get crazy. Yes. And um, the weather is supposed to pick up bad too. Um, uh, hmm. And a sense of natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, volcanoes. And wow. I think this is around the world. Um, 
But I will say one thing about the weather. After this situation happened, the person in the documents didn't really talk about weather again. So I'm hoping that whatever is going on weather-wise kind of ends after this solar cycle. Um, and we go. So we're optimistic. Minimum. Yes, yes, I'm optimistic. Um, so we got that scenario playing out with what I just said. Um, the possible economic crash begins in October. Um, and one of the things that I did bring up on one of your shows before was I talked about, um, and, and I bring it up a lot on Twitter, one party will implode and another party will rebuild and the party that rebuild will, um, take the, um, will, will take the, uh, will, will lead America into the future. And we see that with the Republican party right now. Uh, and, and I wanted to bring up something I said in the last election that I thought was going to happen. And I don't really think Donald Trump dies because I think he ends up going to win the presidency, but that weird scenario might play out and something weird might happen. There's supposed to be some kind of weird event that happens, um, before the election. I think it's before the election. Right. Um, I wasn't really given a specific sure. time. But yeah, something weird I, happens. I would say it either happens then or J six, or, um, yeah. But some tumultuous like event, and. Uh, uh, but I don't know the details of it. But um, so because, whether it's the weather or the economics or the poli yeah. political or but, the anything, it's all tumultuous. But then, but, but what it seemed like there was a loss of communication um for uh, maybe a week or two maybe three days three days to two weeks is what i'd like to say um there was a loss of communication is what it appeared to be but i'm real iffy on the details so now it's like emp or bomb so something yeah. but it's not, it's not it's not a permanent like like if yeah if something bad happens know that everything will come back on Right. Um, and that's kind of what made everything feel so Armageddon like and just the atmosphere of the hatred, the, the Christianity versus Islam. Um, but I will say one thing and nowhere in any of the documents that I read and did the world come to an end. The world did not end by nuclear holocaust or anything like that. Um, so the documents were a story of, of tumult of tumult and then yeah. resolution and then resolution which it it all depends on when world war three starts or that the main the main part of the war um and and when the great uniter comes because the great uniter is the person that ends this war but it takes his full presidency so if that happens in the next election then we're looking around this lasting until about 2035, which would be the exact same time that that paper expressed that the Great Depression for the whole world would happen between 2026 uh, and, and 2035. 35. So, so we're, if all this goes down, roughly around 2035 is when things get better. Exactly. But if something happens before and the great united comes up maybe in this election cycle which i'm not to me i'm i'm kind of taking that out um because maybe. one of the things that i was looking for in the last election was for a third party to come up but I, I put that on twitter i was like where are all the third party votes um but that's what made me notice that i was four years off was the third party influence came this election cycle and we can see that now i thought it was going to be see here's the thing was i talked about a new party for me but i didn't know exactly if it was going to be like a new party that already existed like the independent party coming up or if it would be the unification of like yeah a rebirth or a rebirth yeah like like we're seeing the republican and the independent right. party coming together and forming this whole thing called like a unity party yeah and it makes me wonder well now that we see certain Republicans floating over to like Democrats, are we going to see a reemergence of the Democrat Republican party? You know, right? So, right. 
I, and if so, I hope that party dies because we know what they're all about. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this is very interesting. You're an interesting guy, and we've got a narrative here, and we you we you you've you've got a lot of interests, and we touched upon a lot of things. And you're working on your novel, and you have all this education under your belt, and you're going to do interesting and great professional yeah. things. So uh, you're an interesting cat, man. Thanks. Thanks. So are you. Oh, and, and, and thank, I like, you. thank you. I like I like what you're doing. I think you're a great example of the introspection and everything like that. And uh, thank you, bro. I'm uh, I'm glad I'm glad to see that you you you've come around and um, and that you're voting for Trump and everything like that. I that was that was actually a big surprise for me. When yeah, I, it's just, it's just, a, it's yeah. just the, the, like I said, the dam broke. I mean, the, the logic of, for me, the logic just but, could yeah. not be denied any longer. Yeah. Despite the so. fact that, you know, it's, you know, he's, he's a lightning rod. It's, um, it's, I've, I've, I've shifted. I've undergone a bit of an evolution. Not that I absolve him of all sins, but it's, yeah, 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 it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Man, thank you so much. Uh, for sharing this this with me, and I look forward to engaging with you regularly on X and having you back on if you're ever interested for another chat. Of course. As a matter of fact, if anything goes weird during the election time and you want to have me on to talk about it, that's all cool. Oh, well, you can bet your ass that uh, <laughs> if something, if any of the fucking things that you listed come remotely close to happening, I'll be <laughs> immediately asking you to be like, all right, dude, wh where are we at in this drama? Yeah. Yeah, it, what else? The last thing I'll say is, I went out to dinner about four months ago with my girlfriend's friend, okay. whose boyfriend is a really smart, like machine learning uh, engineer guy, and a really sober guy, highly educated, working for a three-letter agency now. Was at some defense contractor beforehand. And he didn't get into specifics, but like I said, a very sober guy. We're at the dinner, and I thought I was asked because I was. This was when I was really getting into aliens on on X. Uh, you know, really yeah. getting this whole information um, stream that people would call conspiratorial or certainly alternative. And I said to him, bah, bah, bah. and he goes, "You're not crazy." He goes, "You're not crazy." I know you're because he's as in he's working on that stuff. Yeah, like like, and he goes. There are certain things that will be released in twenty twenty nine. I think he said, but he said you're not crazy, and that that was chilling. Um, because I was going here, I was going into dinner with this really nerdy, not even really nerdy, super cool, but like I said, really sober math engineering guy, and I brought this crazy energy to him. All I want to talk about is aliens, and all he did was, in the most serious way possible. Like, oh yeah, I, I wanted to talk to him about I it. I wish you could bring him on because I know I no, no chance. Yeah. But the reason I brought that energy and that curiosity to him is because he was working for a defense contractor, and uh, in this advanced space, yeah. uh, oh, so to speak, space. And so, let's leave it there because, yeah. you know, a listener might say, "Hey, this Cody guy is awesome," but you know, he's off his rocker. Um, and that's a fair reaction. That's what that's what a, a mainstream thought would have to an alternative thought. But uh, for anyone who might have that reaction, um, I had that kind of conversation. And, and there's a lot of things that just make you go, shit. Are there is there a much more than what meets the eye? And so wh when does the rabbit hole end? Any final thoughts there? Um, when does the rabbit hole end? I think... Um well, you don't even have to address that, but just any other, any other parting would, words you, you want to leave me with. Um, well, um, any parting words I want to leave you with um, is that um, well, I hope everything goes well in your life, and I just I just wish the best for everybody. Really, that's right. that's uh, my whole motto. Is you know, uh, while I'm creating this whole, I call it my organization because I see things like what I'm doing, kind of a business wise. And I kind of plan things accordingly that way. Um, but uh, I, uh, my motto is success breeds success. So uh, the more successful everybody else is, the more successful we are overall. And 
that's the message that I think people need to contain. Is I don't think we should see each other as like competition or anything like that. We should see um, ourselves as ways to make each other better. It's and a I unitary I, mind. Speaking. Exactly. And Be, if we treat, did that, treat your neighbor like yourself and yeah. increase those increase yourself increase your neighbor and it's all the same exactly and so be positive be creative yeah and that's it yeah i got it and, i and think i get i I'm, move forward leave the past behind because right. the past ain't going to do anything for you right Vir right. virgil virgil said it best wow fortune, Amen. fortune favors the bold right so That's good. Go. This is good. This is a great, yeah. great place to leave it. Now, yeah. now I'm really thinking. <laughs> all right, buddy. All, all the right. best to you and your missus, and I will talk to you soon. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You too. You have Take a good care. one. You as well.